welcome to the 67th United States Handball Association's Formal National Handball Championships. My name is Dave Vincent alongside Robert Gaither here today as we have the men's semifinals on the show court at Los Caballeros Sports Village. Yes, we do. Welcome, everybody. All right, we're about to start the first semifinal of the morning. Represented by the Olympic Club, we have Emmett Cusco. Here's the announcement from Abraham Montijo, our referee. And the Pashok got that first round of applause from the Olympic Club, now representing the New York Athletic Club, living in Boston, Massachusetts. Zero, zero. Returning the serve here is Killian Carroll, our returning champion from last year. Nice serve there. Looks like they're uh, feeling each other out on that first point. A lot of soft, easy shots, a little defense. Maybe trying to see what the other player is trying to do. Zero, zero. This is the best two out of three to 21. Tiebreakers to point. 11. And there's that serve that Killian doesn't get enough credit for, but certainly deserves. And when he's locked One, in, zero. his serve is unbelievable. Short ball. Short. First, that first serve uh, just didn't do anything. Hit Second. the back ball, didn't come out at all. Dominating the front of the court, winning another point. In race for eight play, Zero. Killian Carroll owns the series at a three to one margin against Emma Pichot. Point. There's a double bounce. A little bit of a run here for him to start the match. Three zero. What Killian can do. He could be either a quick scorer or a guy that it takes forever for him to get onto the scoreboard, but he usually comes back with a win. Well, it hasn't taken him much time in this game. Emmett yet to get Point. started. There's a uncharacteristic miss for him. 5 0. Of a rare miss there for <laughs> Killian. Black like him and even given up on that point. 0 5. Short ball. Well, said that their records in race play were 3 to 1 in favor of Killian, but he also took down Second Emmett serve. in Boston at the Boston Open. The first time they ever played. That was about, you know, as young as Killian is. That was about six years ago. Point. And Emmett's on the board. Nice control of the front court on that play. Gets the win. 1 0. Set up. Emmett's very strong with that left hand. In fact, the first time I ever saw you play was against Emmett for show. Something just rattled back there. The door making a huge noise. Dive there from Killian Carroll. This is what he does, Rob. He keeps the, the rallies alive. For an offensive player like Emmett, that gets real frustrating as the match goes on. Oh, that's a nice corner kill. And now Killian is appealing the serve. It's a short serve. Oh boy. Looks like we got second serve and no point for him at on that. Second serve, one five. That's that's rough. Point. A little bit of justice on that. Two five. Nice little hop right there on that serve from Emmett. Little congestion, no call from the referee. Both players playing through it. Just don't, 
You just don't want that ball to come off Sorry, the back wall at all against a top player like Carroll. They just nail that every time. 5-2. Killian Carroll is our defending champion, defeating Paul Brady last year in that thrilling finish. I, I believe you watched that on the live broadcast, Robert. I did. It was amazing. Killian Carroll is, in my opinion, the quickest player in the sport, the best get artist in the sport. He gets down lower to hit a ball than anybody in the sport. Well, once again, it shows you there, just don't let him have any time to set up speed, because if he does, he's just going to nail it. Six two. Big setup here. See what creativity Emmett has. Nice hop on that. Slide out. Enough pace to give him trouble and gets the point inside out on that. The only time Pichot has ever defeated Killian Carroll was in a playoff in race for eight point. play when they were in Houston. About 20 minutes after Killian Three, lost six. to Brady, he decided to go onto the court because he was fresh and he played Emmett, and that's when Emmett took him down in one of those playoff point. matches. That's the only win that he's had against him. But Dig might have played a factor in that. Four, six. In fact, Emmett hasn't defeated anybody in the top 10 in 2017. That's surprising. Second. And at the Simple Green U.S. Open in October, Killian took down Emmett 6 and 18. That was just last October here at this club. A great get there. Well, you're going to see a whole highlight reel of that from Killian. See how Killian put himself in the perfect position to take that ball off the back wall. Not just a great get artist and athlete, but he knew exactly where Emmett was going to hit that four. shot off the back wall. Anticipation led to that way forward. Short ball. Keeping in mind the results from last year, Second. Paul Brady sure looked like all business so far in this tournament. Now we're going to see Paul coming up in about an hour and a half, if not less. Point. Emmett not happy with the result there. You can't give Killian anything Seven, easy, four. but he sure makes the hard stuff look easy. Hold it, that does. Our referee Abraham Montijo from Tucson, Arizona. Seven four. There's a side out. There's a low percentage shot. Take a little chance on that. Hits the floor. Four seven. No call on that. You know, from the pace of the game, it looks like uh, Kalian's controlling it, but it's still a relatively close game here. Five seven. out of position on that point. Calls for the California timeout where they ask for the towel right before. I saw the California salute on the way in to the club today. That's when one of the friendly residents give you that nice little gesture. It resembles a wave, but it's only with one finger. They're usually waving at themselves with their hand, though. That's the problem. Speaking of coming into the club today, I think I saw an airplane hit the highway earlier <laughs> on the 405. Okay. okay. And, and somehow I don't even doubt it. I'm just, okay, yeah. And what else? I also saw bad traffic. I, yeah, I think that's what caused the bad traffic. Really good get there. Carol just digging it right before it hits the ground for the second bounce and gets the, gets the win on that point. I tell you, it's a perfect weather for indoor handball today. It absolutely is. Beautiful day here. Woke up this morning to the sound of birds coughing. Kind of smoggy in my part of town. 
but it's nice and warm. Sun is out. This is the reason why you make this a destination. Southern California. Listen to this list of tournaments that Killian Carroll has won. He won the Gaffney in Ireland, which has become a really big weekend tournament. New Orleans, Houston, Salt Lake City, Denver, Tucson Armed Forces this year. Only loss in 2017 was to Brady in New York. I watched the excellent one. match between him and Dave one more Fink. Uh, that was awesome in New Orleans. Yeah. yeah. That was, and then Luis Moreno uh, before that was an, another awesome match. And that Dave Fink match was terrific. I'll tell you that David Fink continues to surprise you. He comes up with a good match every now and then. Well, lately, he's been on fire. Unfortunately, so has his back spasms. That's why he's not sitting in the chair right now next right, to you, Robert. Or next to me, and you be in the <laughs> gallery as a line Eight judge. Five. Or whatever. Fight out. Rare miss for him there. When he gets a chance to come in and five eight. Points. Point. And it's showing that ability to kill off the back six, wall eight. once again. Short ball. It looks like he's taking a little bit off of his serve on that left side. Second. Trying to keep it off the back wall. Just ends up short on that one. There's a nice pass. Point. I don't, Seven, eight. I don't remember seeing too many pass shots for a win against Killian Carroll, that's for sure. Well, he seems to put a hand on everything. If you get a pass shot, it's because he's completely out of position. Second. Or you just execute like Emmett did there. Yeah. That Second was, serve. It's almost a perfect shot. Light out. Relax the days ago, didn't quite set up and move his feet, and was rewarded with hitting the floor. A couple years ago, knowing that you're a fan of these live broadcasts, we were talking about New Orleans this year against Dave Fink, but when these two clashed Second. two years ago in New Orleans at the race stop, that was an interesting outcome where Emmett wins game number one 15 to zero. And you might recall what happened right after that when Killian gave Emmett a taste of his own medicine and then in the tiebreaker. Nine quite seven. interesting. I, actually, I believe what it was was 15 to zero, and then Emmett wins, Point. and then loses 13 to 15, 13 to 15 in the tiebreaker. Ten, seven. So you know he can Short compete ball. against Killian, but well. Emmett's coming off of a broken hand that he suffered back in Second. in March of this year. Okay, so he's still on the comeback. Play a screen, sorry. Play a screen on that. Oh, that's play a, a late call. Late call. No disagreement from the players, though, so they're accepting. Replay, 10 7. Point. That ball is buried. Now, this is one of the first times you're able to see him in person. What's your thoughts on Killian Carroll? He's very, a, very athletic. Uh, like you said, he gets really low to the ground. Probably lower than anybody in the game right now. I'd say the only exception would be Mondo Ortiz when he's healthy. They have, a, they have aspects of their game that are similar, and then other aspects are completely different. But certainly in the server's box, they seem to kind of parallel each other. Killian seems to have a very adept uh, defensive game as well, able to play a ceiling game. Works it to a, a setup and a point on that one as well. Something you don't always see from a player that's offensive is uh, Killing Carroll, but it's nice to see good defense thrown as well. This is the 67th United States Handball Association's Four Wall National Handball Championships, where we are live from Los Caballero Sports Village in Fountain Valley, California. I want to thank Jeff Kastner flying down from Portland. He's doing the directing here today. Camera angles. I guess if we call for it, we can get some instant replays. 
I, I believe we've seen a couple of them um, already. There's definitely been some plays worthy of instant replays on this match so far. Good shot of the gallery there. I want to thank the United States Handball Association's President's Club as they help raise funds alongside the USHA and their membership base, WPH Board of Directors and WPH members and employees all donating to help bring this one to us. Paul Brady seeking his 11th national title to tie Nadia Alvarado Sr. Killian Carroll is looking to repeat because he won last year, right. giving Paul Brady his only defeat in 11 straight tries. Well, and I was there uh, for Nadia Alvarado's 11th win, so this would be monumental if, if Brady was able to, to tie that feat. Uh, I can't recall off the top of my head that Dave Chapman has got to be up there somewhere. Eight or nine. Something. He has nine. Nine. Paul Brady has 10, Naughty Senior 11, and we're talking four wall small ball okay, here. 12 7. Point. Make that 13 to 7 now. Killian first game going to 21. Starting 13, to pull away 7. a little bit. Change the serve down the right. It seems to be working for him right now. Well, the serves can be absolutely 14, seven. unbelievable because he's changing sides and he's good on both left and right side. Wow. They're a little off balance. Emmett takes care of it. Well, he but changed his hop on that one too. He went to a natural instead of a reverse. Seven, 14. He's not going to make you feel comfortable if you're returning the serve. No doubt about that. Rob, I said I earlier that the first time I saw you play, I, I believe it was against Emmett, but it could have very well have been against one of the opponents on the other side of the bracket. But that was in Pleasanton, California, and Emmett was in that Super Bowl handball tournament, I believe. Correct. I, I played him in the semifinals. Okay, yeah. great. So you know a little bit about Emmett's play. And, uh, you know, not much has changed. He's had some injuries, but he's still the same guy. He's always in great shape. Uh, he's always tenacious on the court doesn't really give up on anything and is a threat to kill the ball from anywhere with any hand. So you got to be on your game when you're playing in it. All around player as well. Outdoor, indoor, he's certainly one of the top three, if not top two, outdoor three wall small ball players. I've had the pleasure of seeing him play in Toledo a couple times as well. He's he's very impressive outdoor. He, actually, he has come to our Kansas City tournament a couple of times and played in that one as right. well. Well, Emmett's got a huge fan base watching back home his wife, of course, here, and she's probably the biggest fan back in Watsonville, California. I know you're friends with the Pachotes and the, and the whole family. They've done a lot to promote the game of handball, which is it's a, good, it's nice, a good thing for the sport. Right. Handball and definitely needs all the contributors we can get. And the Pachotes have been excellent. I've never had the chance to go to their tournament there, but I've heard just wonderful things about the, the the hospitality that they put on for their tournament up, up in California. Well, Emmett's hoping that he can channel some of that family energy because he finds himself down here after a glove change. Killian Carroll is doing what he does best. He's going to keep the pressure on you. It's sort of the feeling that we get when we remember back to that young 17, 18, 19-year-old Emmett who was always constantly pushing you around the court and then getting everything that you would hit. Right. And that's kind of what Killian is here. He's, he's that guy that he has a great crisp shot. His serve is amazing. Back wall kills are on top of uh, the handball world. He's in great physical shape, but he still is going to push you around the court and try to wear you down. Right. And it doesn't seem like he gets tired. So at times you're going to look at him and say, well, yeah, he's not a Paul Brady. But then you realize... What he's doing is something that Paul Brady's not ever faced. Somebody that's going to push him around and uh, and take advantage of court position. He's dominated that, that front center court position in this match so far. And that, I think that's why he finds himself in the lead. Killian Carroll, since we have a little time here, did something pretty remarkable yesterday. He was playing his match in the quarterfinals. And I was standing courtside holding the door open and one of the fans there said how do I get that shirt you know how do I get Killian's shirt and of course I said well you know we don't sell that that's Killian's has his name on the back and, and that sort of thing so 
I said, we don't sell that. It's especially made for Killian. And he goes, oh, I really like that shirt. And well, this, this gentleman's about 11 rows up. I'm standing at the door next to Killian. I go, Killian, give me your shirt. <laughs> he doesn't even question, turns around, takes his sweaty shirt off, hands it to me. I throw it to the guy and, and I turn around and sit down. I don't say anything to Killian. Gets in his bag, gets another shirt on, goes in there and plays. Doesn't complain. But isn't that a great thing about handball? The camaraderie. Yeah. The, that gentleman saw me today and said that was the best moment of my entire life. He said that I, I have, I was a fan, but I, I love this guy now. Yeah. I said, what about me? <laughs> I'm the middleman, right? I mean. Well, and that's a shirt that he's worn in a match too, so it has a little extra special tributes to it. That shows you the openness and the, you know, the gentleman that Killian is, and some of these pro players. They understand, you know, their value, and some of them do. And, yeah. and, you know, it's important to reach out to the fans. But that was a great moment witnessed by everybody in the gallery yesterday. That's going to build him a good fan base as he as he goes along in his career, being that type of gentleman. Because that's what people in handball expect, someone that's a, a gentleman and, and people to get along with. And it's something we've come to expect from handball. 15-7. Score is 15-7. to seven. We're going to 21. 15-7. We're 28 minutes into this men's semifinal. <laughs> Goes right after a crack. Almost gets that good call by Evan. You see how Killian misdirects, goes over to the right side, has to the seven. left. But that's what he does. He's creative and he works you side to side. Point. And he has those shots yeah. too. That's just natural ability right there. That isn't something you practice. Just be able to pick it up off the floor in a short hop and kill it in the left corner. 17, seven. That was close to a four minute timeout that we just Light saw up. there. <laughs> Somehow during Emmett's matches, he just has a way of milking that clock. Seven, well, well, I noticed the organization of his gloves in his bag probably isn't the best part of his game. <laughs> There's a perfect pass. You know, we're talking about Emmett's wife, Jessica, watching in the crowd. He's one of only two players on the Pro Tour that play with his wedding ring on. Some people take it off. Actually, most do. Only Dave Fink and Emmett Pichot leave theirs on. Rob, you've never been married, so, so I, you would I don't know. have that. I don't have that uh, problem. Deciding, uh, You've had multiple point. engagement rings on, but Correct. you just never could pull the trigger it's true. on having to take it off Nine during a match. Unless it got stuck. Broke ball. Until that point right there. Well, actually, he hasn't scored, has he? It's eight straight points now, nine straight points for killing. See if Emmett can reverse that. That ball hits Emmett in the back. That'll be cleaned off by Killian, as Emmett's going to try to take as much time as he can here. Rolls it back to him. 9.17. All hits a crack, gets his first point in quite some time, does Emmett. And this isn't a case of Emmett being tired. He's just slowing it down, trying to get focused, trying to figure out a way to Short. slow down this the momentum that Killing Carroll has at this point. Second. be a setup here. Oh, wow. Catches it. <clears throat> a lot of power right there, and Emmett knew he had to put a little extra 11, to get that past Flash. Flash Carroll. Looks like he put a little bit more on that Second. serve. Maybe he's feeling a little more comfortable with it. Doing a much better job controlling the front. She saw two continuous uh, passes down the right, kept him off balance, and was able to get the point on that. 12, 17. 12 to 17 now. That's Light up. Emmett doing what a lot of the older players do after the serve, just not looking back. I think that <laughs> he could have gotten that if he would have just positioned himself to see what Carroll was going to do. 17 to 12. Well, it wasn't a perfect put away, but. He was expecting it to be. Ah. 
point. That was creative. I'd like to see a replay of that yeah. if we had it. I that was like a, that a stiletto right corner to front kill with his fist. Yeah, that was a crazy shot. Oh, Thank you. Two bounces. Point. Two bounces, good call. And that's that's a case where uh, an amateur referee might call a hinder on that, but giving Killing a chance to, to hit the point and get the win. Lucky for us, we don't have an amateur referee. We've got one of the game's best. Replay. Emmett needs to gather his breath just a little bit. Nineteen twelve. There's an excellent pass. Killian Timeout, Emmett, taking 20. the opportunity to control the front court. We have 20 12 to come back. Timeout on Emmett. Let's we'll see how many minutes he gets on this one. There's a replay of that shot. I don't know if we're able to do that, but let's if we can, let's take another look at that replay. Here it is, Robert. Killian Carroll forcing Emmett to take a timeout, which is what I felt Emmett was going to do after that last point. It just seemed a little bit lethargic as he was walking back to return the serve. And I thought, this is, Emmett needs something to happen here where he can afford himself some time just to rejuvenate himself. Had a good little stretch there where he was able to climb back in the game a little bit, and then uh, Killian quickly taking over again. Time back in. 20, serving 12. Aggressive up front. That's what he's going to have to do. That's the sort of shots Emmett is going to have to take when he's on the run. He's going to have to be aggressive because that's exactly what Killian's doing and Killian's converting. 13, right. So if you're going to be on the run, don't always go for defense. Oh my gosh, are you kidding me? Good. It was so good, Emmett jokingly calls it a skip. Takes, smile on his face. Taking a little bit of that 20, attention away from Killian on that amazing mouse. Oh, by the way, he's not afraid to go to the roof either. Oh, yeah. I have to say, I'm very impressed with his defense so far. First game, guys, five minutes. Emmett just jacks that ball into the ground, and the first game ends with Killian Carroll getting the win. We are going to take a quick break. We're going to be back right around the corner. We'll probably leave it right here on either the gallery or the court, but Rob will be back in, I'd say, about four minutes. Okay. So stick around. More handball action coming up right around the corner. Watch this replay. That's the closest, <laughs> flattest mouse you're ever going to see right there, Killian Carroll. Getting a point, winning game number one. We'll have game two coming up next at the USHA Four Wall National Handball Championships men's semifinals between Emma Pachot and Killian Carroll coming up in four minutes. Game number two, stick around. We are back for game number two as Killian Carroll takes down Emma Pachot in that first one. Okay. Looking zero, for 21 zero. points here to make it to the finals in consecutive years. Point. 
takes control of the front court and gets an easy set up there in the right corner. 1-0. Point. Deal. Point. Two zero. Takes a little too much there. A little low percentage shot. Hits it on the floor. Emmett gets the serve. Zero two. Take his time and try Zero, to get on the two. board here. Killian, like it, going for the dagger there <laughs> with that deep. Second serve. The deep shot. Earlier, you said there was a, a plane that crashed right near here, out on, near the highway. John Wayne Airport's right around the corner, and I say as a crow flies, probably what five miles, six miles from here, something like that. Yeah. But as 405 goes, that's uh, that's two and a half hours. But nonetheless, you saw the puff of smoke as you were driving in for the slide broadcast. Yeah, I was there before the some of the police and ambulances got there. It was still on fire. You're a first responder. <laughs> Look at that get right there from Killian Carroll. And the rally's still going. This is what has made him popular. Ooh, that ball might have slid. Unbelievable oh, yeah. get. Crowd puts their hands together as Killian does it again. Amazing back wall dive to the front wall, keeps the rally going, ends up winning with the left paddle, front corner kill. Crowd puts their hands together. Emmett, Emmett acknowledges the great play as well as he motioned to uh, Killian here. Short ball. Second. Nice return. Emmett's got that amazingly accurate Left Zero hand two. goes right down the middle. He sometimes, he sometimes seems more Point. confident with his left hand than he does with his right. One, two. There's a point, sir. And a fist pump, which means appeal. Appeal that two, serve. Two. That yep. was a good serve, by the way. Short ball. Killing isn't really one of those guys that's going to talk to the referee, Second. appeal, or even ask for anything out of the norm. He's just a machine. And unless that machine is Alexa, <laughs> it just doesn't talk. Point. Damn it, slowing it down. Well, Emmett might find something here. Three, two. If Killian keeps making errors on those ceiling shots. Short ball. I think Emmett's already realized that. Second. That serve down the left is developing some returns that he wants from Killian. Tried to Point. take a little mo too big a bite out of that one. Hits it in the floor. Emmett getting Four, a little two. control of this game here. Switch to a natural serve that time. Second. That was going to be trouble. Two, four. Great get by Emmett there. Stays in the point. Nice shot point. there. I don't think that ball came off the back wall the way Emmett thought it would. Looked like he uh, just tried to get it back. We saw Emmett shaking his hand there after that rally. Three, That's three, the, four. the one that Emmett broke in New York in March. 
I would say Killian probably didn't notice, otherwise he probably would have served down the right on that. 4-3. Point. Notice this tournament, the, sometimes the ceiling shots aren't kind Nine, as the lights tend to change the direction of the ball every now and again. Yeah, they're located right in the spot that you would hit him if you're going for a ceiling. That's an aggressive left-handed kill shot from Emmett Bichot, who's turned the tide just a bit here. In fact, si three. since that long rally where Killian dove to the back wall, he hasn't scored since. Hold it, again. Emmett. Emmett's mad. He wanted to hit that ball down the right wall, missed three. it. Lost an opportunity there. Definitely three, had an offensive three. opportunity to put the point away. set up here. Killian so dangerous when he's able to move his feet, which he does so well anyway, but right. this time he had a little bit more time to do it. Yeah, anytime he gets a chance to set those feet, turn his shoulders, he really nails it. Killian's already made four, four errors, four hand errors here in game number two. Side out. A little aggressive on that. I'm not sure if you circle that as an unforced error. He certainly was going for it and missed it as it dipped into the right corner. Goes for the crack, gets it, does Emmett. Back in the driver's seat. A little mistake there, Emmett. Knows he had an opportunity to put that point away. Just a little too high on it. Killian able to refill it. Three play six. Point. Now four to six. Four to six. Nice shot, revolving door from Emmett. Really Good. set up, took his time on that, made a nice shot. Looks like he's taking his time a little bit more in the game. He had a couple of times in the first game where he took some off balance shots, didn't set his feet, and this time he looks like he's really setting up and taking advantage. Big set up here. He missed an opportunity on that point. Something you cannot do against a player of the caliber of Killing Carroll. There's an instant replay. A lot of other players would have tried to hit the right corner on that Four setup six. there. Instead, Killing goes right back where Emmett was migrating from, down the right wall. And now Emmett's starting Three. to make those same type of errors that Killing was making here. Five six. We're at five to six. What happens when you shoot when the player's in front of you? Player caliber and eminent able to just re-kill it, put it away. Six five. Short ball. Second. Take from Emmett. Five thirty six. Short ball. Second. Point. Emmett just missing these shots up front. And it's just really opened the door six, six. for Killian. And even with that said, they're only tied at six, right? As bad as Emmett's played here in the last two minutes. Damn it. Point. That's a great shot right there. Really didn't look like he had that much of an offensive opportunity, but still able to play the way. Beautiful 
shot, killing Carroll. And Let's that, that ball drop a bit. Emmett. Not surprising Emmett takes a timeout after Killian takes the lead. <laughs> Don't blame him either. <laughs> Killian just takes that little extra step back and lets that ball drop, and he hits that kill shot right in front of Emmett. And the, just a long line of scoring there. Emmett not making the right choices in his mind. I think he's being just a little too concerned about his defensive shots, and he's just missing putting Killian in, in terrible positions. But instead, Killian's able to load up, hit these kill shots, drive balls down the walls, and Emmett knows that he's putting too much pressure on himself to make these perfect defensive shots against Killian. And the top players will do that. Right. They, they make you take aggressive shots wrong. They make you take the defensive shots wrong. But you can just see the frustration in Emmett saying, at, after each rally, it's like, I did this to myself. Right. You know, I was trying to put you in the backcourt, but I didn't hit it hard enough. <laughs> and I think right now he might be focusing a little too much. And in the end, Carroll able to put it away. I mean, you could set the guy up, but if he hits it on the floor, he still hits it on the floor. He's still, he's still converting on those opportunities. Something a great player does. Something Emmett did to start right, the game. He in. took advantage of his opportunities, able to score. Needs to get the momentum Scores back. Eight thirty-six. I believe the score Point. at one point was three to six, with Emmett leading and Killian in the service box. Nine now six. nine to six. Six straight points for Killian. And the way Killing was playing earlier, the score should have been tied at nine. But a lot of sloppy play from both players. Point. Threw him off balance. You weren't sure if he was going to hit the front wall first or the side wall first. It's the side wall. Kicks to the side, and able, Emmett not able to get that. Ten six. Point. Reeling off points one after the other here. 11-6. What a get. Point. I would be interested in if someone would keep a stat, how many times a guy would had to hit the back wall first, how often they actually won that point. I know Killian did it earlier well, in the first game. But Emmett does not come up with the win on this one. Not a great serve there. Ball short. Second serve. Killian going to the dominator serve on that. See what Killian does here. He has a little opening, and he's just so stealth. He's like an assassin. If he has that opening, he's going to go for it, and you can see that he's clearly been executing these type of shots 13, and with success because he just keeps going back to it. And even when he misses, he still sticks with what he knows he can do. He goes for a little too much there. Six, 13. I thought if I extended that long enough, I could reverse the curse, but it didn't work. There's another one. Ball slid, and they will probably call it. Killian saw it. Killian called it. Yeah. See how Killian gives that ball back to Emmett. Which, again, that's the sportsmanship of handball right there. Crowd likes it, too. Replay the last point, 6, 13. Short ball. Heels. Look short from here. It definitely was. Second. Big setup for him. You have to convert these. See how aggressive this kid is? It's unbelievable. That was shoulder high. Killed it from a shoulder high and able to put it down. No side wall involved. 13, six. Emmett put it in a fairly good spot, but Killian took care of it. And point. now another point, 14 to six. He was down three to six, 14, was Killian. Six. Now 
11 straight points unanswered. Second. It's an opportunity. I'm in good position on that to hit the rekill. Sometimes the game's so easy as a server, you, you get that good serve and then a first strike, and you say, well, I, why can't I do this every time? <laughs> Nice shot there, Emmett, revolving door. A great side out and a great point there. Actually, a great side out, great point, and another great point. Emmett, sometimes when you get on that point and you can't get off of it, Seven, 14. good things happen once you're able to break that. He's off six. Short ball. Second. Side out. And you just miss with your location on your serve just enough that Killian 14, seven. pops that return, gets back into the server's box. He thought about diving. Skip. Side out. Even his misses are pretty. He set up and hit it what looked like a good shot and just a little bit off. And it wins the point. 14-7. Referee called the score wrong. He said 14 to 7. It's really 7 to 14. Killian has him running all over the court here. He put a little extra on that last one. And was able to put it Side out. Now see what happens when the referee has to turn that scorecard over. He realizes <laughs> that he just called the score wrong. There it is again, the replay. Not really sure that I'd have called a hinder on that either. That's a good call, a good no call, I should say. Well, no arguing from Emmett here, but I could see where people would make the argument that that would be played over, and I've seen referees call it either way. It's tough to take a good shot away from a player like that for a hinder on something you may or may not have even got a hand on. Then you. I don't know if you take it into consideration that you have the two best get artists in the in the game playing right here, and one of them is known for making those type of shots. Yeah. So it's it, it becomes very difficult. You can't call everybody the same, but the rules kind of indicate that you should. I'm not saying it was or wasn't, but it's I could see where a referee could certainly give that. Yeah, change it. Two he gets minutes. The California timeout, and then he gets the glove change. So smart two minutes. Move. Emmett definitely slowing things down here. If we're able to look at the instant replay one more time, we certainly will of that. Nah, maybe questionable if I keep talking about it. <laughs> Nobody else is really questioning, I don't think. Hinder it looked, play. It looked like Emmett looked up at the ref for just a second to see if maybe there was a, a hinder called. But when there was no hinder called, there was no argument. Or here it is. It's kind of hard to argue when you're out of, out of air. He looks up for a call, doesn't get it, and then asks for the towel. It really did look like that ball was just past him, especially where Emmett would have had to have taken that ball, would have been sliding much harder into the sidewall. This is the 67th USHA Four Wall National Handball Championships, Los Caballeros Sports Village in Fountain Valley, California, where the best players in the world have all converged. This is the semifinals for the Men's Open. Killian Carroll from Ireland, now living in Boston, in the States. That's just basically Ireland East, or Ireland West, I should say. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I think there's more Irish in, in Boston than there are in Ireland. I know certainly in Chicago there is, but. Well, in my days in Tucson, I got to play with the great Pat Kirby from Ireland, who's a legend handball player from Ireland. And just the every person I've ever met from Ireland plays handball is just a first-class gentleman on the court, off the court. I thought you were going to say every person from Tucson, Arizona was a gentleman on and off. I, I could go on further to say that as well. because I know you can say off the court they're correct. a gentleman. That's correct. Unless you're talking about Rick Hatcher. I, I'm, I can't say anything about Rick. He and I have had some good times together. He's got more on me than I do on him. So. Okay, well, that's why. I 
I love Rick. Good, good dude. Becomes. Funny story about Rick Hatcher. I played him in uh, Minnesota in the Nationals in a consolation match where we refed our own, and I called it avoidable on him. And Tommy Little, to this day, still gives me grief about calling an avoidable hinder in a pickup game. <laughs> Well, I once DQ'd somebody I was supposed to play in practice because they showed up 11 minutes late. <laughs> it was back to the all-you-can-eat buffet that was being offered at the time. I had incentive, of course, to get out of there quick. Had to get there before they shut it down. Well, I mean, you don't want me to starve. The hospitality of this tournament okay, has been excellent go. as well. Looks like they're cooking some ribeyes or something over there right now. Good stuff. 14-7. Score 14 to 7, game two. Make that Point. 15 to 7. And a 12 to 15, 1 seven. run for Killian Carroll. It seems that he's cleaned out some of those hand errors that he was making early on. And that's a pretty much a dive, but a great shot by Killian and, or I'm sorry, they changed shirts, so. <laughs> great shot by Emmett, gets the win on that point. Yeah, I, I will hand it to you here. It's, it's pretty glary outside in our broadcast booth. It's very sunny right now. And another side out here is Killian Carroll going in for for the win, and my broadcast partner of, of the norm, Dave Fink, said on a text that Killian Carroll playing with a lead is a lot different than the regular Killian Carroll. He, he tries to, once he has a lead, he tries to go in and put you out, like, instantly. Well, so, when he's playing with a lead, he's serving more often, and his serve is definitely one of the strengths of his game. That would make sense. But I contend Killian with a deficit is also <laughs> dangerous because he doesn't ever seem to lose those. He makes these. Well, the few times he's behind, you'd have to really pay attention, I would say. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's, he, he plays different that way, too. Look at that Point. shot. That's just unbelievable. And, and not much you can do there. No. He just t takes a step back with his right foot, steps into it, and hits the right corner. I think I took an erratic bounce. We're going to replay that. Yeah. Gonna replay the point. Do it again. No argument for during Killian. That, during that break, you said that 16, you looked up what was going on at the airport. You said it was a, like a single plane Cessna? or Correct. It hit the hit the highway in the 405 Second. going That's unbelievable. south. Any fatalities? Did you hear? They don't, they don't release that information too early. I was kind of, my first thought is point. Killian hits a beautiful right corner kill was that, oh, Harrison Ford's back in town. <laughs> I thought the Seven, Millennium three, Falcon was at the uh, event arena. But. You know, when people say that the drivers out here are crazy, they don't usually indicate that they're coming from the sky, but. 18, oh, wow, oh, look at that. Yeah, he's got everything, this kid. Killian Carroll going down on his belly, and now he's about ready to close out game number one. 19 to seven is the score. For, for something that very well could have been a point for Emmett, just throws himself at the ball and able to re-kill that. Incredible athleticism by Carroll on that point. And the, as you can see, the frustration from, uh, from Emmett, he knows he had a good chance to win that one. I believe the score is 19 to seven here. And if you look back at what was happening at the time when Killing was down three to six, and he made at that point, with the first nine points on the scoreboard, probably about six hand errors. When, and those hand errors coming from Emmett slowing the game down, defensive shots, ceiling balls, three walls, keeping Killian in deep court, you know, in that back two thirds of the court, that's where he made all his hand errors, not in the front court where he's been dominating. And then Emmett went on a string of making some of his own. They were tied there at six. Killian went up to nine to six, and it, it really felt like at that point it should still be tied at about nine because Emmett could have capitalized more on some of those hand airs that Killian made, but didn't do it. Seconds. And then Killian's just gone on this, this tear here where 
Pichot looks a little lethargic, and Killian is pulling out the death hammer. It's like Killian is on the 405 right now. <laughs> Trying to get his pilot's license. <laughs> that's how, that's the co-pilot on that one. <laughs> like he's the one in charge of how the traffic's going to flow today. Well, Killian definitely has control of this right, match. Man. Emmett trying to slow it down, trying to find a way to climb back in it. Short ball. Second. Oh. Point. Service winner on that one. 20 match point, serving seven. Able to get back in, another chance to score some points, maybe climb back in one at a time here. 7 30, 20. Sounded like that ceiling check hit a light. I don't know how it couldn't. Nice little Light paddle up. re kill there from Killian Carroll. These nice lights touch. are very old here. And if they ever do put in new lights, it would be nice to see them remodel and bring that set of lights back about two feet. It seems to be a, a prime spot to hit a ceiling shot in. 20, 37. Here we are. Match point. Killian wins the first one, 21 to 13. Looking for his last point here to go to the finals. And he misses it. Light up. Gets the setup. A little bit of rumbling there from the crowd. Side out. That's frustrating. Twenty thirty-seven. Perfect serve. <laughs> In match. Match. Impressive, impressive I, win. I mean, that serve right there is about as good as you're ever going to see. Well, it's bounced twice before the back wall. There's, when it's by you like that, you expect it to come off the back. There's nothing you can do. I'd like to see the replay of that again. He goes over the top of the ball, slices it in a sort of counterclockwise motion to get that reverse, and that ball slides down that left wall. It was pretty impressive from Killian Carroll, who wins game number one, 21 to 13, down three to six in game number two where he just fights back and Emmett never really scores again, ex exception of one play. And, you know, some nice play from Emmett there for just a brief moment. He never really could get onto the scoreboard other than that one time. And Killian Carroll goes on. See that, again, that impressive serve to win the match. To an 18-1 to run to win, 21-7. to And now he will be in the finals for the second straight year.